So in this video, we uh, are going to look at a monostable mode 555 timer again. I've done a number of videos on these, but uh, this time we have uh, the voltages set up where it can be uh, lithium iron phosphate battery range voltages. So the uh, charger, that's the uh, current estimate with the blue LED, and uh, that's the red one right there. The uh, chargers that you apply, the lithium iron phosphate batteries, are often rated for 14.6 volts. So we'll zoom in. So we want to use value components that can handle that much uh, voltage for the most part. And uh, so 14.6 volts as well. The charger is attached, but at some point the battery is going to get fully charged. And then the uh, voltage is removed and it settles down at 13.6. So the higher voltage you charge it to, but that's the absolute max. Um, the more stored charge it's going to have, even though it's 13.6 volts. You can't really tell uh, state of charge with uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries. But if it's 13.6 volts, you know it uh, has been charged. As you use it, it goes down. Hovers around 12.8 volts. That's the nominal voltage. And then uh, when it's about uh, ready to start uh, being discharged completely, it goes to 12 volts. And then you can squeeze out some more charge to 10 volts. But that's it. If you go lower than this, you risk damaging it. So probably want to stop at 12. In any case, we uh, got the components for 14.6. That's why. That's if you have a charger attached. So basic monostable mode stuff, uh, pin two, if the voltage is high enough, it doesn't do anything. You get it less than one third supply voltage in this case by closing the switch, then it sets the output high. So the pull up resistor just prevents stray signals in the air from triggering it or other uh, factors, lowers the chance in any case. And uh, so then the output will go high, the uh, capacitor will start charging right there. When the capacitor gets to two thirds supply voltage sensed by pin six, then the output goes low and the capacitor uh, discharges. So um, this is a pretty high, relatively high value resistor there. At some point you can go so high that uh, these electrolytic capacitors start leaking the current through them enough where they don't really charge uh, good. Um, so be aware of that. Uh, instead of going higher in resistance at this point, I'd go higher in capacitance if I want to add to the uh, timing. And um, now we will uh, talk about pin four. So. Uh, if you get a low enough voltage, that resets the 555 timer holds it low for as long as it's reset, no matter what. And uh, so you put it to the positive supply, you got a high enough voltage there now where it doesn't do anything. And of course you got to power the uh, 555 timer. One to the negative supply, eight to the positive supply. Now, uh, most importantly here, we have uh, loads. Um, so we got to protect the loads and uh, again, Maybe I set this up for 15 volts, but definitely for 14.6. It was a long time ago I put this together. Let's just say we can get the full supply voltage out of here. 14.6, uh, of course, usually you lose at least a volt, maybe even two volts uh, from the positive supply, just because it goes through transistors. But uh, just worst case scenario, we have 14.6 volts coming out across this load. We won't want a single resistor of a lower value basically than what you see here uh, because it would get like too hot you got one resistor they're all the same size you know that's uh, uh, that's a 100k resistor there a 470k resistor there um, they're all the same size you know they're quarter watt wattage uh, is mostly determined by size so if we put them in series they divide up the voltage that you got so 14.6 uh, you know even though it's not going to be that high we're calculating that the red LED will drop it to 12.6. That's uh, too much voltage, I think, to put across a single 1,000 ohm resistor. But if we put uh, a couple resistors in series here of 470 ohms, which is basically half, you know, um, just keep the math simple, they will divide up that voltage. So we'll have 6.3 across that one and 6.3 across that one. 470 ohms can easily handle 6.3 volts across them. And um, so, you know, they're half the value, each of them, of a 1K resistor, uh, but they got half the voltage across each one of them. So ultimately, you'll end up with the same amount of current going through them if, if they were perfectly half uh, value right there. But uh, they're splitting up the resistance. So uh, mostly, they're, each one of them is getting, you know, maybe half as hot as the single uh, resistor and uh, maybe not even that hot. Um, so we can get a lot more power if we uh, have series resistors than a single resistor of a higher resistance passing the same amount of current. Hopefully that makes sense. 
Not going to dwell on that too much. Blue LED, again, we could do the same thing there, but blue LEDs are really bright. And um, so we just, uh, you know, a little bit more than doubled the resistance right there to uh, cut the current down for the uh, blue LED. So hopefully it won't be as terribly bright. Now, in reality, we lose about a volt or two from here. Uh, so it's uh, actually not near as bad as the worst case scenario, but it's always best to prepare for a worst case scenario. And uh, yeah, now I'm gonna zoom back and bring this over. So yeah, we had the 14.6 uh, volts. Again, that's absolute maximum. Let's look at what it would be if the uh, battery was fully charged. Uh, probably, you know, the charger removed. It's uh, basically the same there. That one volt didn't make a huge difference right there. And the nominal voltage, so the vast majority of the time, the voltage is gonna be close to that. And there you can see, still working uh, basically the same. And uh, of course, 12 volts would be about the same. Let's go to worst case scenario. Uh, we use the battery, it's uh, basically dead. We don't wanna use it anymore, but right before we disconnect the battery, hopefully before the BMS auto shuts off or something's damaged, um, there you can see, it's still working perfectly fine uh, right there. So. That's why I used the values that I did here. Um, after you learn the basic circuits at five volts, it's uh, really good to learn how to adapt those circuits to higher voltages, just in case you're working with uh, higher voltages. Um, basically like this spot here kind of emphasizes that um, as you go up in voltage, the amount of heat that a single component is going to uh, create due to that higher voltage, goes up exponentially. So you got uh, a higher voltage across it, which means higher current. The wattage is the power, the heat that it's gonna create is the voltage times the current. So uh, as both of their numbers go up, uh, the amount of heat it's gonna create goes up a lot more than that. So you gotta take that into account. Um, as you work with higher voltages, even if it's not a ton higher, make sure you do uh, wattage equations for the components and make sure they're not gonna overheat. That's really easy to do, even with sometimes a slightly higher voltage. So that's it for this video, thanks for watching. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen and check out the links down below, they all help out a lot. I'll see ya in the next video.